subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time i post a new lesson welcome to another class of uh, excretory system today we are going to learn about uh, counter current mechanisms so these mechanisms are useful for the formation of hyperosmolarity in the interstitial fluid of the medulla so that the excreted urine will be hypertonic to the blood plasma so there are two types of uh, counter current mechanisms uh, the first one is counter current multiplier system of loop of henle and the second one is counter current exchange system of vasa recta so these two counter current mechanisms uh, how they operate uh, let us study so this is the nephron structure so this is the bowman's capsule and the green one is the glomerulus so as the afferent renal arteriole enters in the glomerulus and it filters the blood and the primary urine is formed in the bowman's capsule this primary filtrate is isotonic to the blood plasma so the osmolarity of blood plasma is 300 milli osmoles per liter so 300 milli osmoles per liter so it is calculated osmolarity is a measure of concentration of a solution in terms of uh, solute particles per liter so when we calculate the osmolarity of the blood it uh, that is the serum of the blood it is 300 milli osmoles per liter so the primary urine also is also 300 milli osmoles and the plasma is also 300 milli osmoles per liter so the two solutions are isotonic in nature how this isotonic uh, primary urine becomes a uh, hypertonic uh, with uh, 1200 milli osmoles per liter osmolarity so this is due to the structure of the loop of henle loop of henle is uh, a different in its structure it contains two limbs one descending limb and one ascending limb and in the ascending limb two segments a thin segment and the thick segment are present so as the primary urine passes from the bowman's capsule into the proximal convoluted tubule it is permeable to water and solutes so water goes out into the interstitial fluid of the cortical region so then it moves towards the descending limb of the henle so the descending limb of the henle as it goes downwards deep into the inner medulla region inner medulla region so this is a juxta globe juxta medullary nephron so it goes deeper into the inner medulla as it goes deeper into the medulla as the walls of descending limb of henle are permeable to water the water enters the water enters into the interstitial fluid as the water enters into the interstitial fluid slowly the osmolarity increases as the osmolarity so the filtrate comes to the hairpin so the turn of the henle loop and enters into the ascending limb ascending limb contains thin segment and the thick segment into thin segment urea is secreted from collecting duct so this urea along with the filtrate enters into the thick segment of the descending limb so this is the thick segment of the descending limb so this segment the walls of this segment are impermeable to water and permeable to solutes so the sodium ions comes out from the filtrate into the interstitial fluid by active transport as sodium ions move outside by active process chloride ions moves by a passive uh, to compensate the charge so as the solute molecule enters into the interstitial fluid so here the osmolarity in increases and the concentration increases uh, and the osmotic pressure also increases as the osmotic pressure increases the water from the descending limb moves so as the osmotic potential is less so the water having the high osmotic potential it moves into the interstitial fluid due to the osmotic pressure of the uh, liquid present in the in this region due to this uh, water is dragged into this so as water is dragged into this area so the filtrate in the descending loop becomes more concentrated 
So, as it moves downwards and it and again reaches into the thick segment of the ascending limb, here the sodium ions moves outwards. So, as the sodium ions moves outwards, the osmolarity increases, osmotic pressure increases and water molecules are dragged from the descending limb. As these water molecules are dragged in, osmolarity is in, uh, movement of the liquid in the limbs of Henle in, multiplies the concentration, multiplies the concentration. That is why this is known as counter current multiplier. So, the flow, current means flow. So, the filtrate flows downwards in the descending limb and upwards in the ascending limb. So, these are the two opposite direction, one goes downwards and another one goes upwards. So, there is a opposite movement of the filtrate in these two limbs due to this and the movement of solutes from thick segment. So, osmotic pressure and osmolarity are increases as the osmolarity increases more filled, more water comes out from the descending limb. So, that is why it multiplies the osmolarity, it multiplies the osmolarity that is why this is known as counter current multiplier system of loop of Henle. If this is absent what happens? So, if it is Henle's loop is not a hairpin like structure, if it is a straight tube then this type of osmolarity cannot be created only 300 will it will becomes a, uh, 300 here the 300 when it in the descending limb when water goes out it may be decreased it may be increased to 400 milli osmoles so the outside becomes 200 milli osmoles so there is a net difference of only 200 osmolarity in remaining the remaining thing there is no exchange of uh, sodium ions and, and the increase of osmotic pressure as the osmotic pressure increases it draws more water from the descending limb. So, that is why nature is very clever, nature is very clever it bend the Henle's loop, it bend the Henle's loop so that the concentration will be multiplied. So, at the deeper into the deeper level of the medulla, the concentration is increases, it becomes up, up to 1200 milli osmoles per liter. So, that is the beauty of the bending of loop of Henle. So, uh, from the uh, ascending limb of the loop, so as the water, uh, as the solutes moves outside and water does not enter into this, so uh, the concentration of the filtrate in the ascending limb will be decreased, decreased and it becomes again 300 milli osmoles which is isotonic to the plasma. As it enters into the cortex it becomes 300 milli osmoles and as it enters into the DCT, distal convoluted tubule, some more water is reabsorbed and it is permeable to solutes also. So, NaCl is also moved. So, uh, so the further the osmolarity of the filtrate is decreased, it becomes 200 milli osmoles per liter in DCT. The DCT is, is also under the control of an hormone which is known as ADH or antidiuretic hormone. So, this hormone also enhances the uptake of uh, water molecules and the sodium chloride. So, from the distal convoluted tubule, the filtrate enters into the collecting duct. The medullary region is also under the influence of ADH hormone which is secreted by the pituitary gland. So, water from the medullary collecting duct enters into the interstitial fluid and urea also enters into the interstitial fluid. This urea again enters into the ascend, thin segment of the ascending limb. So, this cycling of urea is known as recycling of urea. You have to be very careful here. Here I am using the word recycling. So, recycling is different from cycle of urea which occurs in the liver. So, here the urea is recycled. So, this urea is also plays an important role in maintaining the higher osmolarity in the medullary, inner medullary region. So, this urea again goes upwards and again it is comes and this urea is again liberated into the interstitial fluid from the medullary collecting duct. 
So, this is a how the hyperosmolarity is created by the loop of Henle. So, once the osmolarity is created, we have to maintain that osmolarity that is 1200 milli osmoles per liter in the inner medullary region. So, to maintain that higher osmolarity, another counter current exchange mechanism is involves and that is the counter current exchange system of vasa recta. So, vasa recta is the peritubular network around the Henle's loop. So, it is the peritubular network around the it arises from the efferent renal arteriole and surrounds the Henle's loop to provide oxygen and food to the Henle's loop. So, this is also this vasa recta also follows the path of the Henle's loop. So, it is also in the hairpin like structure. So, here the as the blood in the descending limb of the vasa recta, this is the descending limb of the vasa recta and this is the ascending limb of the vasa recta. So, as the blood flows into the descending limb of the vasa recta, so the osmolarity of the blood we know 300 milli osmoles per liter. So, this region as it moves downwards as the blood flows downwards in the vasa recta, the water comes, it is permeable to water and the water goes into the interstitial fluid, it goes into the interstitial fluid and sodium ions enters into the blood. As the sodium ions enters, the chloride ions also move uh, into the blood. So, as the sodium chloride ions enters into the blood, the concentration gradually increases. So, osmolarity you observe osmolarity is increasing. Once the blood flows through the ascending limb and enters the cortex of the kidney, so it loses the sodium and chloride ions and water re-enters into the blood. So, water and uh, so the water which is withdrawn into the interstitial fluid from the vasa recta at the descending limb is again gained by the ascending limb of the vasa recta. So, here the water molecules and sodium chloride are exchanged between descending and ascending limbs. That is why it is known as counter current exchange system. Here also the blood flows in opposite direction, downward direction and the upward direction. So, due to the movement of uh, uh, counter current movement, uh, the water and the NaCl are exchanged between the descending and the ascending limbs. So, this is also important to maintain the higher osmolarity. If the vasa recta is not hairpin, hairpin like and if it is a straight one, it draws all the osmolarity all the sodium ions which are formed in the med in inner medullary region. So, higher concentration, so it, it takes all the sodium to make it to isotonic. So, it becomes a waste for the Henle's loop to, to create uh, higher osmolarity if the vasa recta is a straight tube like that is why the vasa recta is also a hairpin like structure. Due to this structure, only the few amount of uh, sodium is taken in and the osmolarity of the leaving, leaving blood is slightly higher than 300. So, that is 325 milli osmoles per liter. Only few amount of uh, solute is taken by the blood and maintains the higher osmolarity in the inner medullary region. So, these are the two mechanisms with which the hypertonic urine is formed. Mainly the loop of Henle, it is useful to create the hyperosmolarity in the interstitial fluid of the medulla. So, that water will be moved past easily from the collecting duct and urine becomes hyper. Tonic. Hope you understand.